All right, cool. Um, can we just start with um, name, degree, year, and age? Perfect. Um, my name's Alicia Aiken Radburn. I'm in my third year of a medium communications degree, mm -hmm. and I'm 21. Cool. And your slogan and colour? My slogan is Unleash Alicia, and I'm running on orange. Cool. Um, and campaign manager. My campaign managers are my friend Jen Light and mm -hmm. current board director Robbie Magyar. Cool. Um, so, moving on to some of your personal politics now, are you aligned with the political party? Yeah, so I'm a member of the Labour Party and on campus I'm a member of Student Unity. Mm -hmm. um, so Student Unity works predominantly for policy for the National Union of Students. Um, and I've made a lot of friends through that group, so they're supporting me in my bid for union board because I think they've seen how passionate I am about the union. Mm -hmm. And I'll also have a whole range of friends joining me from CNS, Subski, um, and a whole range of factions. Sure. Um, what other factions are you being supported um, by? At the moment, I've had a few people come out from SLS. Mm -hmm. I've got Harry Stratton in a shirt, who's That's a lovely right. man. Um, I've also had a few friends from the Conservative Club, club come out for me. Sure. Um, and I've also got a few more left-leaning friends helping me out that are particular, probably wouldn't call themselves part of grassroots, but they are on the more left-leaning side of the scale. Sure. Not to say anything bad about the Conservative Club, but what do you think they see in you that they like? Um, to be honest, the people that I'm... The people that have been coming out for me from the Conservative Club um, are actually just personal friends of mine um, that just happen to be on that side of politics um, and those mm -hmm. friends have in turn sort of mobilised their bases and that just happens to be the Conservatives Clubs but I suppose what they do see in me and what I hope that they do see in me um, is my passion for the union and I've really run through my policy and I think they're excited about that too. So the Conservative, so sorry, is it individuals within the Conservative Club that support you or the Conservative Club as a whole endorsing you? No, I don't think that the Conservative Club as a whole is endorsing me, but it, it is particular individuals that I've been friends with since first year um, mm -hmm. who are, just happen to also have a lot of friends in the Conservative Club, sure. as they remember, um, and they're just rallying up support for me, which is good. <laughs> Um, which other candidates in the election do you feel you share a political philosophy with? Um, at the moment, well, from what I've seen and what I've read in people's policy statements, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I think I share ideologies most strongly with Kate Bullen and Ed McMahon. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I've, I'm really impressed with their ideas. I, I consider myself a progressive candidate um, and I really like their, their ideas on transparency and accountability um, and I can envision working with them really well on Union Board. Cool. Um, do you know who you'll give your first preference to and also your last preference to? Um, my first preference to? I would probably say Ed. Um, that's because I identify with his ideology um, and also I think he's a really intelligent guy, I think he's a really hard worker um, and I'd love to work with him on union board at the moment. Last preference would probably be going to Callum Forbes, the Liberal candidate. Mm -hmm. um, I think myself, like a lot of the other candidates, have been a little bit concerned with some of his, um, some of his actions coming up to the campaign. Um, he's probably blurred the lines a little bit between what is in the regulations and what isn't. Yep. Um, and also, um, obviously, there was a little bit of an issue last semester with him um, fraud defrauding the union in the Souls campaign. So um, I'm a little bit wary about Callum on union board. Sure. Um, we'll move on to views on the USU next, but just quickly, um, if elected, who would you vote for for President of the Union? Um, I would be voting for my friend Robbie Magyar. Yep. Um, I've been very impressed. Out of, out, of, out of the first few board directors, I have to say I've been particularly impressed um, with some of the things. I think as, from, the, from day dot since he got elected, mm -hmm. he's really been working to just... He has a list of his policies that he ran ran on and he's just been working to tick those off. Um, he's done some amazing things with, he did a queer review um, and we've just recently, um, he's 
a tainted gender neutral bathroom in the home building, which I think is really exciting with the new developments. Mm -hmm. um, he's also, I, I'm just so happy to see that portfolio being active. I was also really impressed with his stance on the Tom Rowey issue um, because like him, I'm, I really value transparency and that's the direction that I want to see the union go in. Sure. Sure. Um, so, I mean, this seems like a good shift onto transparency. Beautiful. You've publicly stated that you would have voted um, against the attempted dismissal of Tom Rowley, so you would have voted to keep him on board. Do you think there's a deficit of transparency in the union right now? And if so, how would you solve that deficit? Okay, so my major issue with the whole Tom Rowley debacle, I would call it, um, is really that I think... I've been really disappointed in the union this year just because I think that the union has become way too internally focused and we are still doing some really fantastic positive things. The thing that really irked me about the Tom Rowe case is I really disagreed with the first censure. Um, so logically I don't agree with his complete removal from board. Um, I think that a board director should be able to criticise their organisation and I think that's one of the most effective ways that an organisation can grow. Um, and I also do believe in the second inst instance, while it was a little bit more of a complex issue and I can't get too hypothetical because I wasn't on board and I didn't have their legal advice, but I do think that Tom was genuinely acting in student interest and I do think that's what should be at the heart of every board director's decisions. Mm -hmm. um, as for going about working towards trans a more transparent board and actual tangible pol way ways we can shift board culture is firstly I'd like to be a member of a new board which does have that shift in board culture where we are preferencing things like student if interests over moving to a more corporate union which has been this kind of sentiment for a while um, because we do want to be a strong we want to be strong financially and so that's why I understand that we do need to have we we do have to have corporate interests at heart as well but I think it's I think it's really problematic the way that student interests and our corporate interests have seemed to be at odds with each other yep. they should be working together like they're not mutually exclusive it's not this dichotomous relationship our corporate interests are there to serve our major stakeholder which is students Yep. So, ways I would go about fixing it is I'm very happy that mo the majority of the candidates running seem to be moving in that direction. So, I would be love to have the majority of the board wanting to be more transparent. Yep. And I'd also like to investigate some constitutional amendments that we could potentially make to make sure that things like Tom's first censure doesn't happen again. Yep. Um, sure. can, can we ask a couple of follow-ups on those? You mentioned yes. that... The, the union was becoming more corporate. Can you talk about how that's played out and the kind of specific instances that you've seen that the board becoming more corporate has interfered with student interests? Um, to me, it's just a little bit of a balancing act. There hasn't been anything particularly that has jumped out at me, me particularly, as the union becoming over-corporatised. For instance, I wrote a letter in response to... Um, Nick Robertson's article in one of the first editions of Omiswara about OWEEK becoming too corporate mm -hmm. and it's not in my opinion that OWEEK is becoming too corporate because there is a reason why we have corporate sponsorship. It's so we can buy an incredible stage that we can showcase over 99 clubs and societies, uh, over 200, we had 99 um, performances yeah. to, <laughs> to clarify. Um, so. So I, know, I know that some members of the organisation are worried about instances it's becoming over I'm not, at the moment, I'm not putting the brakes on. I just, I suppose, I would always be looking to act in student interests and there, there is a stopping line for me. For instance, I was the campus culture director this year and I was given the opportunity from the sponsorship manager to receive sponsorship from Daiso, which is an amazing $2.80 store. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I did really have some boundaries and I was very clear what those boundaries were and I told them when I was really uncomfortable with the amount of promotion that they were coming to do because I would like to see corporate... I would like to see corporate involvement in the union be 
more of a benevolent goodwill thing, like the donation of a marquee. That's what the Daiso sponsorship was for me. I was able to get an awesome marquee that made the Funch program much more visible on the law lawns, mm -hmm. and that was what it was important for me because I wanted that Funch program to really engage more students, and I think it has successfully. Yeah, sure. So what was it that Daiso was proposing to do that made you feel uncomfortable? I just want to talk about yeah. the specifics of what you consider to be okay. too far on, on the corporatism spectrum. Okay, so I don't... I think that corporate sponsors should... I don't think we should be taking sponsors treating students like consumers. I think it should be more of a benevolent support system. So Daiso, for instance, it was just crossing the boundary, they were coming and doing a lot of promo and I thought that was detracting from my main event mm -hmm. um, and when their promotion was, I felt like their promotion was going better than my actual event was, um, that was problematic for me. I want, I want it to be, all the focus to be on the free things that we were engaging students in or for instance the Jazz Society was performing on the Law Lawns, that's a position where I don't think it's appropriate for a business to come and flog their items. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you also mentioned just before when we are talking about transparency that you'd be supportive of a number of constitutional amendments to increase transparency within yeah. the union or of the board. Can you talk about what those constitutional amendments were? Okay, so one particular thing that's jumped out at me, um, and there was a recent, the board ran a transparency review, and one of the things that jumped out of me and what, I, what does make me feel slightly uncomfortable is that in the constitution it says that the president is the sole spokesperson for the organisation um, and for the board, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to investigate and potentially just workshop with the other directors how they feel about that particular, I suppose, piece of the constitution because I think that... While I think that the president should be the primary spokesperson for the organisation, I think that it creates problematic boundaries and it seems to infer that board directors can't speak out about a position that they potentially didn't agree with personally that the board took on something. There's, there's a difference between I'm all for being supportive of a board decision, but there's a point where it just becomes a bit disingenuous to walk away from a board decision saying that you agree with it when everyone just sat with you in a board meeting where you were very passionately speaking against it. Moving on to some of your other policies. Um, so you have an incredibly extensive policy statement. Um, and I think it's quite fair to say that these won't all be achieved. So could you give us an idea of um, perhaps three policies that you would prioritise if you're okay. happy? Three policies I would really like to see happen, what I would really like to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. um, one of those would be, the title is Mind the Access Gap, yeah. um, and that's as I essentially named it that just because I don't want to see any students fall through the cracks. Um, at university because they can't access the access program. Um, that policy derived for me from when I worked at the access desk and I had a student come up to me who had been very involved in SUDS plays. Mm -hmm. um, they'd done about three or four plays and they just auditioned for a new one. But while they auditioned for a new one, they'd also just moved out of home and their financial situation had just changed and they were really, really tight. Their budget, there was, there was no money floating around. And she came up to me and she was like, look, I can't audition for this play unless I have an access card. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that the union can do for me? I actually just don't have any money. I've been in that situation myself. Um, so while I gave her my supervisor's email address, I couldn't really do much beyond that. Yeah. Um, so I would really like to see a formalised process where I would, how I've workshopped it and envisioned it in my mind would be um, a scheme for students doing it tough, disadvantaged students, um, so it doesn't have to be an ad hoc thing going up to the girl who works at the access desk. Um, an application where you can, you can talk about um, what engagement you've had with the union so far what engagement you would like to have for students who haven't had any engagement yet but are really keen to get involved. Um, what your financial situation is, I'd like to, just as a provision to see 
I, I'm a very optimistic person, so I would hope it's not abused. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably hope that it gets signed off by JP, um, mm -hmm. and just just to as a just to make sure everyone who's applying is doing it in goodwill. Sure. Um, and then I'd like to see free access cards for their stu those students, or if well, if elected and I find out that that's not financially feasible, I'd at least like to see some sort of payment installation plan that will really alle alleviate that financial burden for some students and still allow them to be involved. Another policy I'm really excited about, USU jobs for UCID students. Yeah. Um, I've been lucky enough to work as a casual at the access desk Manning and Hermans. They're fantastic jobs, they pay really well, um, and I'd like to see more students in those roles. At the moment, 58% of our casuals are UCID students. I think that should be more like 80-90%. Um, we have students from USW and UTS working at the bars, and while they're lovely people, I assure you, I'd really like to preference UCID students. Um, another policy I'm... Could I just ask yeah. you a couple of follow-ups? Yeah, no worries, sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> I know you're excited. <laughs> um, so just quickly on um, your access card mm -hmm. policy, you just said briefly that um, you would, in the form, get students yeah. to indicate their engagement with the union. Um, how much would that, in your vision for this policy, play into it with regards to their financial position as well? Um, I, suppose, I suppose that's why I distinguish between what their engagement has been mm -hmm. and what their engagement, what they would like their engagement to be because yeah. I don't really, I, I don't really envision this being a scheme for someone who just wants to get 20 cents off their coffee. Sure. Um, I would really like to, I think it will encourage students to really put on to paper what they've been involved with or even if they've just seen a society and they're really keen to get more involved, their access card allows them to do that. Sure. Um, and on the USU Jobs for Staff one, um, you mentioned bar casuals and then you also mentioned, um, I think in your policy statement, the, the marketing department. Um, yeah. So I'm just curious, do you think that um, cutting out people who did not go to UC is potentially cutting out um, people who could potentially be great staff and having experience from other universities? Um, why do you see UC experience as essential? Okay. Um, so where I would factor in UCID experience to USU jobs for UCID students um, and the sort of the more full-time positions like in operations, marketing, programs, yep. um, I would put you being a UCID student or a UCID alumni as a desirable um, attribute yep. that's already in the sort of way that the USU evaluates candidates for roles. Um, and the reason why I think it's a really desirable um attribute is just because I think that I would feel very, I would feel a lot more comfortable with someone working in marketing who is already acutely aware of the um, Sydney University landscape, yep. what our students are like, it's very like, it's University of Sydney is very different to the University of Western Sydney and I just think that, I think it is a desirable attribute and I think that they would be able to be really effective in the role if they already know what Oniswar is, if they already know what the SRC does, if they already know what Uni Brothers is. Okay, cool. Um, if we can move on to kind of budget questions briefly, the most exciting kind of Lovely. questions. <laughs> if you had to cut one million dollars from somewhere in the budget, where would it come from? Okay, this is a tough one. I would probably we're definitely not cutting anything from programs. To be completely honest, I, I think that everything in the union is working very holistically. I know that this is a bit of a nothing answer. Um, I would probably look towards... If, it, if some money had to go... Oh, you guys are actually killing me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably slow down on a few of our... If it meant... If it meant that the student interests were going to be subjugated if we didn't cut this $1 million, I'd probably look towards some of our capital works, put them on the back burner for a little bit, concentrate on our students. Um, our capital works are really important because it means that we have some amazing bargaining power with the university, but I would never want to take anything away from students in the form of 
debating in the form of reviews, in the form of clubs and societies, because the university isn't our buildings, it's our students. Um, and so I'd probably put them on back burner and concentrate on all of us. Sure. Um, and what do you think is the most important area of the budget as it stands? Um, for me, and what's really close to my heart, are student programs and clubs and societies. Um, I think, for me personally, that's where I've made all of my friends at university. I've had some incredible experiences in the clubs and societies program. Um, I, I auditioned for about seven Suds plays, and then I realised that wasn't my place. <laughs> and, then, and then I auditioned, uh, I wrote an application to have a show on Surge FM. Um, our radio station and that was where I really felt like I truly belong and I know that I feel like those are our, those are our strongest aspects of the union, student programs for people who are involved in reviews, for people who are involved in debates, even things like incubate and also clubs and societies. I mean we have over 200 and there is a club for everyone, there is multiple clubs for everyone. Sure um, and, and there's been quite a lot of talk recently moving away from the budget um, from even people like your campaign manager, Robin Magia, um, in the light of the attempted rally dismissal, that the staff of the union, in particular the CEO, have too much power and that the board is often acting as a rubber stamp, I think Robbie said, um, for the staff's proposals and the CEO's ideas. Do you think that the CEO of the USU right now has too much power and how would you go about what do you think is the appropriate role of those executive staff within the union? Okay, so I've had some really fantastic um, experiences with heads of the department. They've helped me, particularly people in student programs like Louise Anthony have really helped me manage my programs as the campus culture director. As for Andrew, I think his primary his primary roles are to act according to the will of the board and to act to ensure that the union is in the safest financial position and I think it's a little bit a complex issue at the moment. I think in ways Andrew has been very very successful as CEO. I think we are in an outstanding financial position and I think it's really regretful that we've been so internally focused because it's really taken away from some of the really positive things the union is doing like the home redevelopment and the laneway cafe which are really going to set us up for the next five ten years. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he's really He's been really outstanding in that regard, but I think one thing that has really taken the back seat for Andrew is the student interests and acting in the will of the board. I think that it's taken him a little bit too long to realise that the sentiment of the board directors is that we need to look towards more of a transparent, accountable union. And I would hope that if I was elected, that I would be a part of a board shift where potentially there was a little bit more respect for board directors. I don't think it's to say that the staff don't respect the board directors, I just think it's a matter, I think it's a two way street. So I think that the board, I would like to be a part of a more active, more engaged board who is, the staff love it. If the staff want to interact with our board directors, so I want to go have a coffee with Colin Benj, the bar, bar manager. I want to go have a drink with Peter Underwood and discuss what he wants to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a two-way street. I think for the staff to respect board directors, yeah. I think the board directors also have to respect staff. And I think there potentially needs to be a little bit of a Mean Girls-esque intervention. Um, where everyone can just air their feelings and so <laughs> we can really co really redefine what the board's vision is, get, but get back to the strategic plan, which is really great. Community, relevance, sustainability. We're doing really well on sustainability, need to focus on community and relevance a little bit. So Mean Girls-esque intervention, mm -hmm. redefine our vision, and I think that would will go a long way to help rebuild some of the relationships between staff and the board directors. Sure. Um, so on the current board, um, what's your opinion on the policies and achievements that have um, came about over the past year? Um, and in particular, um, how do you rate Hannah Morris's presidency? Um, I, think, I think Hannah has had an incredibly tumultuous time. Um, obviously, the 
defining moment of the year has been Tom Rowey. Um, and I think that's unfortunate for Hannah. Um, personally, I think that Hannah is an incredibly strong woman. And even though I potentially don't agree with some of the stances that, to decisions that she's made during her role as during her time as president and I don't personally agree with some of the stances she's taken or for instance decisions not to go into mediation or explore other avenues until we got to where we are now mm -hmm. I do I have to say I'm so, it's so incredibly impressed she's a very strong-willed woman to be able to sit through that special general meeting with uh, over a hundred members sitting there being very, very aggressive, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, to be honest, I hope that if, I hope that I'm able to bring such, I don't know, I was just, I was just incredibly impressed about how she held herself, um, even though I didn't agree with some of the personal decisions that she made. Sure. Um, so, just heading back to a couple of your policies, um, just, I guess these are focused on the logistics. Um, so bean bags. Yeah, um, beautiful. Last time the USC ordered them, fourteen grand. Fourteen grand for fifteen. <laughs> um, and your policy is specifically for bean bags at Hermans. Um, people are sometimes not their best at Hermans. You know, spilled drinks, cigarette burns. Um, is this policy more trouble than it's worth? I completely agree. On, I'm I'm very committed to the bean bags. <laughs> so. Sure. I'd be willing to find 14 grand somewhere. Let's not take it away from student programs. <laughs> but I would really love those bean bags. Um, I have seen the bean bags work successfully at the Cumberland Student Guild. Um, at Cumbo, they have the, the way that they work it is they have about 10 to 15 bean bags in a cupboard and you have to flash the equivalent of your access card mm -hmm. and then you're allowed to drag one out of the lawns. Um, I actually think you might, I, I would probably run it on a system kind of like the Discogs, the little charges at Herman's. You have to actually leave your credit card and your access card, drag out a bean bag, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. No cigarette burns or else you're paying for it. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, Another one, so one of your policies is to find more parking for USC staff. Yeah. Um, there is already, I think as most students are aware, like quite a dearth of parking available on campus. Um, where would these spaces be? Okay, so the parking is really problematic um, and I know how frustrating it is for USU full-time employees to be competing with every other student and lecturer on this campus. Mm -hmm. um, the way I envision it working is down at Manning, just near our loading dock, yep. we have about three specific USU employee parking spots. I'd like to see three or four spots around, eight, designated spots around each of our buildings. Mm -hmm. There's space around home um, in the back near Supra. I think we could work something out at Herman's. We've got a few spots. There's some designated spots for university health services vehicles. So I'd like to work with the university to get three or four spots next to those spots mm -hmm. for people who work down in the Wentworth basement in facilities. Yeah. Um, I think just having three or four designated spots near our main buildings that we own, Wentworth Home and that yeah. would really ease a lot of the pressure off our regular employees in those areas. Cool. Uh, one last question. Um, you mentioned before that you saw yourself quite ideologically similar to Ed McMahon, who's also running in the election. Uh, yet a lot of your policies focus on kind of CNS uh, proposals, I guess, or proposals to improve the student experience um, of, of the union or that the union can provide. Ed supports quite an activist role for the USU, USU involving itself in progressive politics, um, progressive projects on campus and even off campus. Would you support that kind of role for the union as well? I would definitely support it to some degree, and that's why I feel like I'm ideologically aligned with Ed. Um, I suppose because I've had different experiences to him within the union, that's probably why some of my policies more reflect a CNS program sort of base. Um, but I definitely have some sort of policies that I would love to work with Ed on. For instance, I have a, pro, uh, I have a 
policy called USU Justice League. Um, I'd really like to see the USU take a stronger stance on social justice. The USU is lucky enough to be in a much better financial situation than our student advocacy bodies, the SRC and Supra. So I'd like to see the SRC, uh, I'd like to see the USU. So we have this position at the moment called Charity Officer. And so they're in charge of essentially hooking the USU up with a charity at the moment it's Headspace mm -hmm. and looking towards student programs and seeing how we can raise money for Headspace throughout our, student, our incidental student programs. I would like to rename Charity Officer to Social Justice Officer yep. um, and I'd like to see their role extended into acting as a liaison between the SRC and Supra. So it can be very intimidating for people who are officers of a collective or for instance so the women's collective they were running women's self-defense classes mm -hmm. and they went to the USU for funding for printing that's if I was a member of the women's collective at the moment didn't know too much about the USU where I would be ringing the U I'd be ringing the access desk I'd like the SRC collectives and Supra to be very well aware that they can contact this student leader, the social justice officer who acts as a liaison, mm -hmm. and they can pitch whatever they need, be it printing, help postering. We have a fantastic poster run at the union. Um, I would just really like to see the union be a little bit more flexible with the assistance we offer. Um, so I think I do... I would really like to work with Ed because while I do think it's important to keep, I don't want to impinge on what the SRC does and what their role is because they are our strongest activist organisation, but I would like to see the USU and SRC shouldn't be at odds at each other, with each other um, and so I would love to work with Ed. Cool, so as well as more consultation between uh, the USU and collectives, just to be clear about this, you mentioned that the SRC has less funds as an organisation, mm -hmm. I think its budget's about one-tenth of the USU's. Would you be comfortable with the USU giving resources to collectives? Um, so I would, I would, I would um, envision it as probably the social justice, justice officer reaching out to collectives and saying what sort of projects are you guys working on? Do you need any help with printing? Sure. The USU has, the USU has a badge maker, come over, make some badges. Will subsidise it. The USU has a lot of money. Um, yeah, so I suppose I see it working in that regard. Um, as to USU resources, um, sure. Badge maker, printing, we have lots at stake. We have Surge FM. Let's talk about what the SRC collectives are doing. This kind of keys into how I feel about SAF. Um, I'd like to see the USU and the SRC work closer together in standing up to sport. I'd like to see sport take a little bit less money, put that to the SRC, to our student organisations, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> sure. sure. Cool. Well, thanks very much, Alicia. Thanks, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Awesome. Nice. Oh, oh.